Today, I'm going to tell you about an experience I recently had. It was for a corporate video shoot, and I did it all by myself with the camera I'm actually recording to you on right now. This shoot was basically with nine actors, myself as the camera crew. I learned a few things based on this experience. First being, check your equipment. So my equipment, for example, the camera, is a little bit glitchy. So it didn't want to cooperate sometimes on other shoots. So for example, mostly photos actually. It would like freeze up, it would glitch out. That's something you don't want to happen. So the best thing you could do is make sure that your equipment is working well the day before or as much as you can. Now for me, I basically have that one camera, the one I'm talking to. So I can't really go get another one on short notice. And as you say, it's kind of expensive. My camera worked, but you always want to make sure your equipment is working. That goes for mics, that goes for lights, that goes for whatever you're bringing. Make sure it's there. And also furthermore with that, make sure everything's charged because you don't want to be charging things as you go because it's inconvenient to everyone else there. And on a big shoot, like for example, movie and stuff, it costs time and money. You want to make sure everything is working and in order. Now, the second thing I learned is, although this was not my main role, it was plan out the shots. So the one of the people who was there, he was acting in it, but then he also, he was also making the scenarios that we were recording. He was making the scenarios that we were recording. Having that planned out means you know what shots you want to do and what you want to uh, get done in a certain amount of time. Yes, we did go over for the time, but it was actually really close cut in terms of like, we actually pretty much got everything done a uh, specific time, even though we started a little bit late too. I had them send me stuff way before, like a few days before. So I could think about things. I could tell them, oh, this is not good. This is good. So on and so forth. That's something you really want to make sure happen. Planning is everything. Another thing is make sure lights are really good. For example, make sure that bring port, like for me, I have portable lights. So something similar to this, and I use it to kind of brighten some of their faces. And it was really dark, it was a really moody place. So it was kind of dark, had shadows. This place kind of like on video, especially on the camera that I'm uh, watching on, it was not really easy to tell if things were gonna show up because you can only tell from a small screen. The shadows and everything, it was really dark on some parts, like stairs, for example. Another thing is make sure that you always do three, two, one action or the a slate, or like bring something that you can kind of sync it up. Because one, if you're recording the, the audio separately, it's gonna mess you up if you don't have that done. Cause that's how I, if you see some of my previous tutorials where I was doing something on the computer, doing a three, two, one action, that syncs it up really well. Cause you can see it in the audio. And that's something you really wanna make sure that's there. And that's what they use in movies too, because that's something that when they record movies, sometimes they record the audio completely separately. So for someone in editing to sync it up is really painful if that's not there. That's some the one main cue that they use, visual and audio. The next thing is make sure that you're always really working with the client. So for example, so for example, make sure that your client is always happy. Make sure that they always are getting stuff done. And what I personally like doing is I like making sure that they get the shots that they like. So I will show them some of the stuff that they like, regardless if it's photos or video at least show them a little bit. So they're also like, okay, everything's good and we're getting what we like and we can change things up. Or else if they don't, like say you're taking it all dark because that's the way you shoot. You don't want to have them come back later and be like, oh, we don't shoot like this. And that's when editing is going to be really insane or you're going to have to do a lot or you might even have to redo the shoot and that's going to be even worse. So make sure you always show them here and there so you can kind of make sure that everything is going well and that they like it. And also be nice to them because you want to also keep a good client relationship. And that's something that can benefit you even later on, even if it's years, months, everything. You never know when someone's gonna hit you up. I've had people for photo shoots, for example, hit me up years later of after knowing them. And they're like, oh, I'm getting married now. Or I have a friend who is, uh, thing. some people who I know, but I don't, I barely talk to. You never know. So always be nice to everyone and make sure everything's good. Another thing, make sure you have an easy way to transport all your equipment. All your equipment is really important. Just before leaving for to go to the client, I had my everything in like, so I had a tripod, I had my bag, like my main camera bag, and then I had my uh, secondary bag. And I had three things to carry. That's not exactly efficient. And for me, I walked around a lot after too, because I wanted to stay where I was for a bit. And it's not good. So instead, what I did is before I left, I actually put in my gym bag. And my gym bag is a big duffel bag. That really helped because I only had to carry two bags. And the tripod surprisingly fit in there so it was really easy to carry so make sure everything's mobile and portable and if you have a car even better for me i had to commute so on public transit so it wasn't actually that easy so and you also don't want to kind of draw attention to yourself it's also for safety too so people don't like think oh you have tons of equipment i'm going to mug you or something like that you know what i mean and in editing make sure that you have the client in mind and what they want and time frame and also in terms of quality and stuff like that make sure that you have everything set up in terms of this is the time limit we have so make sure you get all your shots in and if you have to cut shots out you have to cut shots out so even if you recorded extra scenes that they wanted if it doesn't play 
a key role, especially if it's supposed to be like, for example, this shoot was an Instagram real thing. So basically you want something as short as possible. So if you have something where like someone's opening a door and it not going to benefit the thing that much, so it doesn't have anything on the door. Let's say for example, the wine place, if it just has the wine's name on it, it's fine. Like, cause then that's something it's sort of like overgoing inside. If it was a plain door, it's not really that relevant. So you can cut it out. So you want to make sure all your shots are relevant and play a key role in what you're doing because that's something that's going to draw the audience in and be like, okay, this is something that works with what we're doing. And props as well, for example, props are the same thing. If you have to take props out, do it because sometimes it clutters things too much. Make sure everything is done properly and done precisely. Make sure everything is calculated. Don't worry about having the most expensive equipment. The camera I'm recording to you on is a T6i. It's a pretty old camera at this point, and it's, like I told you, it's not even working that as well as it did when I first got it. It might seem daunting to show up to clients and be like, oh, I have a small camera, or I have less stuff than some company would have or something. It doesn't matter. If you can do it, and you can prove it, and you can make sure that everyone gets what they want and everyone's happy, it doesn't matter what the equipment is. Equipment to some degree matters because you want to make sure you're not recording on a cell phone, for example, because that's not exactly professional. But if you're recording on stuff and it's not exactly up to date, don't worry about it. It's something more based on skill rather than for certain reels and stuff. You don't even need 4K. You can do it 1080p and it's perfectly fine. Phones are not going to really care that much. Always calm yourself. So calming yourself down, always make sure that you're constantly aware that you're doing well and that you're doing stuff accordingly to plan be overconfident or you're kind of underconfident and not sure what you're doing it's going to show and be very detrimental in both ways to the client because then they could be like he's too cocky about what he's doing and that's something that's gonna that's something that's not gonna show well and underconfident you're gonna be like oh why do we hire this guy you're not even sure he can do it so make sure you're confident but just be aware and be upfront if something you're not sure of so for example some of the shots kind of dark i told them straight straight to them some of the shots are dark i'm gonna try my best but if anything um that's only shots that worry me everything else looks really good so make sure you're reinforcing yourself but also be upfront and honest because that's what people appreciate the most and that's also shows gen human honesty and that's something a lot of people care about especially in business this was another recording phase for a client video if you liked it and want to update video for the editing phase please let me know and i'll be sure to make it thanks for watching uh, please like the video comment down below and subscribe peace out bye